I just want that foundation to tie everything in together. So that's what I want. What do you want from it? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new, then welcome to my channel, which is all about beauty. Today is the Beauty 101 on foundation. I'm talking about how to pick the right foundation shade, what coverage is best for you, how do you pick your undertone? I'm gonna answer all of that in today's video. Also, don't forget, I do have two previous Beauty 101 videos on skincare and concealer and contour, so please do go check them out. Now, before we head into the video, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. You can also catch me on Instagram where you can watch my stories for daily beauty news and PR unboxing. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so my skincare has been done, my concealer has been done, my contouring has been done. You can actually watch those videos, which are my previous videos, and you'll be able to find them in my description box below. But in the meantime, let's move on with this video. And you guys have sent in some questions, so we're gonna kick off with the first one. So foundation is basically either a liquid, cream or powder form applied to the face to create a uniform colour to your complexion. Or sometimes it can be used to change your colour. So for example, if you want to create more of a warmer, darker colour because maybe your skin, your face is a little bit lighter than your body or maybe the other way around. So it basically helps to give an overall veil of colour to the face. So this is quite similar to picking the undertone for your concealer, which I spoke about in my previous video, but we're gonna go through it for foundations only. Now, when it comes to foundations, luckily these days we have so like so much variety in terms of color available, and now they've started to split up undertones as well. So you've got like W for warm, you've got C for cool, or you've got N for neutral. So you do kind of have a good idea, and the brands are kind of like helping to push us in the right direction. But even within that range, you might find that it's maybe not really the right undertone for you. I know that's happened to me, like with some big brands that have stated that, okay, this collection of foundations within our range is cool undertone or neutral, and then I've put it on and it looks really pink on my skin. So it, I, I think it personally depends on your skin color and your skin undertone yourself. So it really is a case of trying a variety of colors. Now, the best way that I could, I could say to pick your undertone is to, obviously, if you know your undertone to begin with, which I've spoken about in depth in my previous video so please do have a look at that because that will help you to determine what your actual undertone is. Assuming you know your undertone you want to make sure that you try a few from that category on your face. You've got to try it on your face so I would kind of apply a few on your face. I would always say like around this area. Sometimes I've even applied it along the cheek area not on the dark circle though because that isn't going to help at all. It's going to make it more difficult for you to see so I would actually kind of like apply it just on this area here or along your kind of uh, just above your jawline here and apply a few different stripes. Now the color that matches well is gonna be the color that kind of like you struggle to see because if, you, if you're kind of like struggling to see where like where does that color start and end, that's probably the right shade for you because it's kind of like just blended straight into your skin tone. The colors that stand out to you and look very different are obviously not the right shade for you. Sometimes, I'm gonna be honest, I've had to mix shades together. So for example, there are two foundations I mix together quite frequently. One is my Tarte Double Duty Face Tape Foundation and the other is the EX1 Foundation because I have an olive undertone to my skin because my veins are quite visible when I'm not wearing any makeup, which I've spoken about in depth in my previous video. That gives me that kind of olive undertone. So I love the the Tarte Face Tape Foundation, but the shade that I use is 47S. I've tried the shade lighter than that, which would kind of, is meant to be the shade that would kind of go for my skin color or match my skin color, but it, it doesn't look right on my skin for some reason. So I always prefer to mix this with a little bit of my EX1 foundation, which has an olive undertone. So that kind of like fixes my undertone and this gives me my warmth, like that really nice golden tone that I like in my skin. So I mix those two foundations together most of the time. Sometimes I only use this because I've maybe tanned a lot and this works perfectly on my skin when I'm quite tanned. And sometimes I'll use the EX1 foundation on its own because maybe I just have no tan and I'm pretty kind of like pale. So that works okay. 
okay and I'm just mainly going with undertone. Sometimes you have to kind of put all the wrong shades on in order for you to understand what your actual undertone is. So maybe try that as well. So this really depends on what you want out of your foundation and what you're using it for. Now, as I mentioned earlier, foundation is mainly used to act as a veil of color to the skin and give a uniform color all over. I use it as a veil of color on top of my concealer because my concealer does all my coverage, concealing for me, and then my foundation is just a veil of color. So it depends what you want it for because you can opt for a foundation mainly for coverage and for that veil of color. Therefore, you don't have to use concealer. In terms of a foundation for myself, I know that I've done most of my coverage with my concealer and I've also got my contouring done. Contouring done, I don't know why I said it weird there. I've also got my contouring done, but I just want that foundation to tie everything in together. So that's what I want. What do you want from it? Do you want great coverage? If you want great coverage and you want it to last all night, but you also don't want it to look cakey, who really wants their foundation to look cakey? So I think that goes without saying. We want good coverage. We want it to last all night, all day and all night and we want it to not look so heavy. You, you wanna think about the type of texture that you're going for as well. You wanna tr try the texture out on your hand as well because sometimes you get like foundations, like for example, the Hourglass Vanish foundation is an amazing foundation, but I do feel like it's a bit obvious on the skin. That for me is great coverage, but I also can see it too much if you see what I mean. So whereas the Tarte Base Tape foundation really does kind of like sink into the skin and it gives great coverage, but it, it doesn't look OTT on the face. So have a look at what the foundations actually say that they're doing. Does it say that it's a light coverage? Does it say that it's medium to full coverage? Does it say that it's one of those foundations that's going to just stay put? Because all of these things make a difference on how it's going to look on your skin. Ultimately, it does depend on whether you're going to be using concealer because realistically, your coverage happens from your concealer. Your coverage from your foundation really depends on whether you're wearing concealer or not. So if you're wearing very light concealer, it doesn't mean everyone puts concealer on like this. If you're wearing very minimal concealer, then you can still opt for a medium or full coverage foundation, which does kind of finishes the job for you, if you see what I mean. Okay, this is a problem that a lot of people have and let me give you an example. So have you ever noticed when you eat an apple, if you eat apples, that when you slice it and maybe you've left it there, after a few minutes it goes brown, then you're like, what's going on? That's basically a chemical reaction called oxidization. Now the same thing happens with foundation. So you know when you put on your foundation and it all looks amazing and then you walk out and you think you look great and then in the afternoon you just catch your like, reflection of your face and you're like, oh my God, it looks orange or it looks darker, what's going on? on it's oxidization but let me clear one thing up i've heard a lot of people say okay i don't like that foundation because it oxidizes that foundation oxidizes no it doesn't it doesn't mean that it does it on every face it doesn't mean it's down to the foundation it could be that it's down to your skin it could be that that foundation just oxidizes on your skin. It could be because of the, the oil production in your skin causes that reaction as opposed to maybe on someone else, it doesn't actually oxidize. You've got to remember it may not be down to the foundation. If you hear a foundation's oxidizing on other people, it doesn't mean it's definitely gonna oxidize on you. Oxidization actually occurs more commonly in people who have more oil production in their skin. And that's why I've even seen it on clients sometimes where they've got such an oily nose and you don't actually realize it first, but then afterwards you can see that it's almost like separating on the nose and that sometimes is down to the oil production on the nose. So I always make sure I really clean it over with a toner first so that it kind of like takes off any excess oil and helps to kind of like uh, just dry out the area a little bit more. Also try using a primer that kind of like grips hold of your foundation, which I've mentioned in my skincare video. The uh, Milk Hydro Grip Primer is great for that. So try using a primer that just really holds it onto your foundation to keep it in place. If you have quite oily skin, then try you try using kind of water-based skincare because then you're not adding extra oil to your skin. You're kind of like letting your natural oils do what they've got to do, but you're not adding anything extra. 
I guess this kind of like comes under like coverage as well, like picking the right coverage for your foundation. It really does depend on the type of look you're going for. So you need to understand what look you're going for. Like if you want something which is quite light and doesn't look like you're actually wearing much foundation, then you want to go for something which can give you good coverage if you want that and also still look like skin. So if you want a very natural finish and you still want your skin to look healthy, then you want to go for a foundation that still allows your skin to look like skin so i really like the dual face and body foundation for that i feel like your skin still looks like skin another great one is the fenty beauty ease drop skin tint it's amazing that's also a good one if you still want your skin to look like skin so they're very light foundations but they're buildable as well and for example if you want to go for something which is kind of like light to medium coverage then the ex1 foundation is great great undertones for people of color like myself there are a few other foundations the oh the cover fx power play foundation is also a great kind of medium finished foundation so all these kind of foundations they melt into the skin well whereas the hourglass vanish foundation is a great kind of medium to full coverage foundation i'd say but i do feel like you can really see it on the skin but if you want that kind of finish it may it may actually look really good on you so then you know go for it but it doesn't mean what doesn't suit me isn't going to suit you you really want to kind of look at the type of foundation like is it something that is going to give you the type of look that you want so if you want a full coverage look then obviously you want to opt for something i personally feel rather than going for a full coverage foundation go for a medium to full coverage foundation because then you can build it up ultimately what i'm saying is look at the fluidity of the foundation think about what you want and then think about the texture of the foundation whether it kind of you think it's going to work well if you want to uh, use it for a light look and a medium to full look You don't have to use concealer and foundation together. Honestly, this for me is preference and I do it, it's my job. You know, I create educational videos for you guys. So I really wanna kind of show you everything, but so that's why I wear a lot of makeup day to day. You don't have to wear concealer and foundation together. Like you can just go in with just foundation. If you, if you don't suffer from severe dark circles or dark circles like mine, which you can see in my first, first video, in the skincare video, you can see it. But if you don't have dark circles like me, then maybe foundation on its own without any concealer is gonna work well for you. So you don't have to use them both together. I like to use my concealer and contour together and then I go in with my foundation. But honestly, it really depends on what your preference is. You don't have to use them together. Okay, so I use a beauty blender and I wanna show you how to use it because I know a lot of people always ask me, they leave comments on my video saying, is it wet, is it damp, is it dry? When I say damp, this is what I mean by damp because I really want you guys to see exactly how you should be using your beauty blender. So we've got the beauty blender, it's completely dry now. Can you see the size of that? It's just the normal size. And then I've got a bowl here of water, right? I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna keep squeezing it in the water and it's gonna double in size. Now you can hold it under a running tap and it will happen a lot quicker because you just keep squeezing it under the water and it's gonna double. You're gonna see how this is doubled in size. And just keep squeezing it and it's slowly getting there. And see that? Look how big that is now. It's doubled in size. You wanna make sure it doubles in size and then squeezing all of this out there you go doubled in size that's not ready to, to use straight away because even though i've squeezed all the water out it's going to be a bit too wet to go into my foundation and then onto my face so i'm going to put it in some tissue here squeeze it again now can you see look at all this tissue it's wet now because it's absorbed all of that it's absorbed all of the water for all the excess water that is my beauty blender ready to be used this is a damp beauty blender perfect for foundation application now okay I'm gonna show you now. So remember I said to you that sometimes I use two foundations and I mix them together? Well, that's what I'm doing today. I'm using my EX1 in the shade number eight, and that gives me my nice olive undertone. And then I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape in 47S, and that gives me that really nice golden color to my foundation. So I'm gonna go in with, I'm just gonna apply, it's like literally that much that I apply. It's such a small amount of the EX1, but it just adds as that really good undertone. And then 
one full pump of my Tarte face tape. Now I mix that on the back of my hand. There you go. See, it's nice and warm there. That is perfect for my skin because I've got my concealer on, I've got my contouring on, and because that concealer is a little bit lighter, this nice warm golden shade with my nice olive undertone is gonna help to balance everything out and just bring it back to kind of the right, the right color so that it just looks like it's nicely tanned like my neck. Right, so I'm gonna go in with my Beauty Blender which we've just wet. I'm gonna apply this onto the back of my hand. Can you see how I'm just constantly pressing it in there? I'm really kind of buffing it into the sponge first because I don't wanna go in and then take a whole load and just apply a dollop of foundation on my face. I want it to be nicely buffed into the sponge before I buff it into my forehead. And now I'm buffing in. Can you see how I am making sure that it's not like, well, oh, here, 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 here. I'm kind of like keeping it very consistent. My movement is very close together. Okay, I'm gonna do the under eyes now. Take this on the side of the nose. Can you see I'm following a pattern? I'm following the application, like the shape of how I applied my concealer, which is on my previous video. I always go on the contoured part last because I actually don't want too much foundation there. Take it down into the neck. Okay, now all that's left is my cheekbone area. Just a little bit of my foundation. And yet, you can see, you can still see that contour coming through. See how you can still see whatever contour that I did, it's still peeping through. Trust me, I have done it without contour. There's a huge difference between how this looks now and how it looks without it, or if you put it on top, because I feel like on top, it starts to look muddy and patchy. Whereas here, this is my preference on how to apply it, because even though you may think that, oh, it's being covered up, it's actually being covered up just the right amount. Okay, so that's all buffed in. You can see now it matches is my neck color and everything looks uniform. So remember how I mentioned foundation is there, it's a veil of color to just create a uniform finish to your face. So a veil of color to just make it all look like it's matching and ties everything up really nicely. If you are going for a look like this, then I would definitely suggest setting your foundation. This can also help just keep it in place. Basically, I don't need to worry about my foundation once I've set it in this way. Now, obviously I'm doing a full glam look, so this is the most that I feel that you would need to do. You don't have to do it exactly the same. You can take away the parts that you need to and do it according to the overall finish that you're looking for. So what I wanna do first is I wanna set my under eyes, but I wanna make sure there are no creases there. Because if I leave the creases there, they're gonna be there all day, especially after applying powder. So I'm just gonna make sure there's no creases. I'm just using the tip of my Beauty Blender to just take out any creases. Then I'm gonna go straight in with my Laura Mercier Powder Puff and my setting powder, which is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake. Okay, so I've applied that on my under eyes. I'm gonna go straight in with my Real Technique setting brush and dust it off. Now this is the part where you wanna choose how much you wanna set everywhere else. Do you want to go in and set this area here, like the forehead, do you wanna set everywhere the same way that you've set the under eyes? Now I know my under eyes are gonna stay put, stay matte, I'm not gonna get creasing because of the way that I've applied every part of my makeup so far, but especially the way that I've set it at the end. What I wanna do is show you how you can still apply the powder in other areas using the same technique, but you can instead use a brush if you want to. So just go in with a brush and then dust it all over the face if you want more of a semi-matte finish, so more of a kind of like, or some people call it demi-matte, you know, where you just don't want it to be super matte, but you do want it to kind of like have a kind of natural finish to it, but it doesn't look oily like or too, like as if you haven't set your foundation. I'm gonna go in with my sponge. There's not as much powder on this now, and I'm just kind of like applying this in the other areas that I haven't actually set. Like I said, you could go in with a brush. You don't have to go in with a sponge. Now I'm gonna just take this brush, go over all of those areas so that I can dust off the powder. Now I know that that is gonna stay put for the rest of the day. I know that I'm not gonna have to worry about it and it's completely matte, but my natural oils will come through in about an hour and it's gonna start to look a, li look a little bit more lived in. Oh my God, my husband just dropped off my favorite Starbucks drink. It's the peppermint mocha. It's perfect because it's raining outside, so this is like my winter drink. 
Okay, so the way that I have set my foundation is I actually applied the powder with a sponge the same way you would do if you're baking, but I dusted it off straight away. I didn't let it sit there. I didn't wait a few minutes. I just went straight in and took it off because I personally, for my skin type and the type of finish I like, I feel like if I was to leave it there for a few minutes, it starts to leave this kind of like, like light powder cast over this area and it just looks really dry and I don't like it. So I take it off straight away. So I get, I apply it in a way that I know it's gonna last all day but it doesn't leave this horrible like powdery finish there and it doesn't change the color of my foundation because when I leave it there for quite a while which is baking then basically it leaves like this this horrible powdery cast of lightness there which doesn't look right that's the way that I do it then you've got when you actually bake and that means when you're leaving the powder on and letting it kind of like really set and letting it kind of like basically set so you can also bake using a damp sponge and I do this sometimes on my clients where the sponge that I use to apply the foundation everything it's still damp so I basically dip that into the powder press it on the under eye area and then I dust it off I still don't leave it there for ages on my clients either like some people leave it on for like 10 minutes that to me is a bit much personally I don't think you actually need to leave it on that long you can actually just dust it off unless you've got severely like oily skin I don't think you need to actually bake if you don't bake then you can just apply your powder with a brush and you just dust it onto certain areas maybe that's better if you don't want a matte finish or if you feel that your skin is overly dry anyway, but you still want your foundation to set. So you could use a brush instead and that's basically no baking. So hopefully I have answered most of your questions about foundation and you've seen how I apply my foundation if I'm going for a full glam look, which you will see in the next few videos because this is a whole amazing kind of like mini series for you guys. Make sure you do catch up with the first couple of videos which are in my description box below. I hope that answered all of your questions on foundation. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments box below. As always, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.